We continue on today with chapter 4, Creation and Communication. It is clear that while the content of any particular ego illusion does not matter, its correction is more helpful in a specific context. Ego illusions are quite specific, although the mind is naturally abstract. Part of the mind becomes concrete, however, when it splits. The concrete part believes in the ego, because the ego depends on the concrete. The ego is the part of the mind that believes your existence is divined by separation. Everything the ego perceives is a separate whole without the relationships that imply being. The ego is thus against communication, except insofar as it is utilized to establish separateness rather than to abolish it. The communication system of the ego is based on its own thought system, as is everything else it dictates. Its communication is controlled by its need to protect itself, and it will disrupt communication when it experiences threat. This disruption is a reaction to a specific person or persons. The specificity of the ego's thinking, then, results in spurious generalization, which is really not abstract at all. It merely responds in certain specific ways to everything it perceives as related. In contrast, spirit reacts in the same way to everything it knows is true, and does not respond at all to anything else. Nor does it make any attempt to establish what is true. It knows that what is true is everything that God created. It is in complete and direct communication with every aspect of creation, because it is in complete and direct communication with its Creator. This communication is the will of God. Creation and communication are synonymous. God created every mind by communicating His mind to it, thus establishing it forever as a channel for the reception of His mind and will. Since only beings of a like order can truly communicate, his creations naturally communicate with him and like him. This communication is perfectly abstract, since its quality is universal in application, and not subject to any judgment, any exception, or any alteration. God created you by this and for this. The mind can distort its function, but it cannot endow itself with functions it was not given. That is why the mind cannot totally lose the ability to communicate, even though it may refuse to utilize it on behalf of being. Existence, as well as being, rest on communication. Existence, however, is specific in how, what, and with whom communication is judged to be worth undertaking. Being is completely without these distinction. It is a state in which the mind is in communication with everything that is real. To whatever extent you permit this state to be curtailed, you are limiting your sense of your own reality which becomes total only by recognizing all reality in the glorious context of its real relationship to you. This is your reality. Do not desecrate it or recoil from it. It is your real home, your real temple, and your real self. God, who encompasses all being, created beings who have everything individually, but who want to share it to increase their joy. Nothing real can be increased except by sharing. That is why God created you. Divine abstraction takes joy in sharing. That is what creation means. 
how, what, and to whom are irrelevant, because real creation gives everything, since it can create only like itself. Remember that in the kingdom there is no difference between having and being, as there is in existence. In the state of being, the mind gives everything, always. The Bible repeatedly states that you should praise God. This hardly means that you should tell him how wonderful he is. He has no ego with which to accept such praise, and no perception with which to judge it. But unless you take your part in the creation, his joy is not complete, because yours is incomplete. And this he does know. He knows it in his own being, and its experience of his son's experience. The constant going out of his love is blocked when his channels are closed, and he is lonely when the minds he created do not communicate fully with him. God has kept your kingdom for you, but he cannot share his joy with you until you know it with your whole mind. Revelation is not enough, because it is only communication from God. God does not need revelation returned to him, which would clearly be impossible, but he does want it brought to others. This cannot be done with the actual revelation. Its content cannot be expressed, because it is intensely personal to the mind that receives it. It can, however, be returned by that mind to other minds, through the attitudes the knowledge from the revelation brings. God is praised whenever any mind learns to be wholly helpful. This is impossible without being wholly harmless because the two beliefs must coexist. The truly helpful are invulnerable, because they are not protecting their egos, and so nothing can hurt them. Their helpfulness is their praise of God, and He will return their praise of Him, because they are like Him, and they can rejoice together. God goes out to them and through them, and there is great joy throughout the kingdom. Every mind that is changed adds to this joy with his individual willingness to share in it. The truly helpful are God's miracle workers, whom I direct until we are all united in the joy of the kingdom. I will direct you to wherever you can be truly helpful and to whoever can follow my guidance through you. And from the workbook, Lesson 29 God is in everything I see. The idea for today explains why you can see all purpose in everything. It explains why nothing is separate, by itself, or in itself. And it explains why nothing you see means anything. In fact, it explains every idea we have used thus far, and all subsequent ones as well. Today's idea is the whole basis for vision. You will probably find this idea very difficult to grasp at this point. You may find it silly, irreverent, senseless, funny, and even objectionable. Certainly God is not in a table, for example, as you see it. Yet we emphasized yesterday that a table shares the purpose of the universe. And what shares the purpose of the universe shares the purpose of its creator. Try then, today, to begin to learn how to look on all things with love, 
appreciation and open-mindedness. You do not see them now. Would you know what is in them? Nothing is as it appears to you. Its holy purpose stands beyond your little range. When vision has shown you the holiness that lights up the world, you will understand today's idea perfectly. And you will not understand how you could ever have found it difficult. Our six two-minute practice periods for today should follow a now familiar pattern. Begin with repeating the idea to yourself and then apply it to randomly chosen subjects about you, naming each one specifically. Try to avoid the tendency toward self-directed selection, which may be particularly tempting in connection with today's idea because of its wholly alien nature. Remember that any order you impose is equally alien to reality. Your list of subjects should therefore be as free of self-selection as possible. For example, a suitable list might include God is in this coat hanger. God is in this magazine. God is in this finger. God is in this lamp. God is in that body. God is in that door. God is in that wastebasket. In addition to the assigned practice periods, repeat the idea for today at least once an hour, looking slowly about you as you say the words unheardly to yourself. At least once or twice, you should experience a sense of restfulness as you do this. God is in everything I see. So today we take another stride toward vision vision of Christ, true seeing. Today's idea is a unifying idea. We are being told by the Holy Spirit that there is a way of looking upon the world that is all-inclusive that is holistic, that goes beyond all thoughts of separate objects, separate people, separate concepts, separate images, drawing us into a very, very still state of mind. we let go of the seeming foreground of separateness and sink inward into a very, very unified awareness. At first glance, this idea, God is in everything I see, can sound to the untrained mind like pantheism. Pantheism is a belief system in philosophy that God indwells in objects. But as the lesson yesterday and today point out, nothing really exists in and of itself, separate, defined by a location in time and space, a size, a shape, a texture. 
a smell. There's nothing that exists in and of itself. Not human beings, not trees, not mountains, not clouds. You might think of the world initially as a tapestry, it's a very large tapestry or quilt, and then the individual threads or patches begin to dissolve and merge into a unified whole. No lines of distinction, nothing to differentiate anything from anything else. And yesterday our lesson talked about removing all our ideas and concepts from a table to see that a table shares the purpose of the whole universe. And with today's lesson, God is in everything I see. We begin to withdraw all meanings and distinctions, all definitions from the perceived world. Today we tell ourselves, we shall look on all things with love and appreciation and open-mindedness. We shall experience them through the, the heart, the core of our being, all-inclusively, because we are one with God, we can see the world in a unified way. If God is one, certainly we can be humble enough to open up to first seeing the world as one, one world, not removed from our mind, unified in our mind. This is the quantum field spoken about in quantum physics. Unified connectivity, pure connectivity, no inside, no outside, everything perfectly connected, perfectly unified. So we practice with what we perceive, we let our eyes look around the world, we make no distinctions in anything that we think of, anything that our eyes rest upon. As Jesus tells us, our list of subjects should be as free of self-selection as possible. We can apply this idea that God is in everything I see to everything specifically that we perceive. To everything in a, the vicinity of the body's eyes, an iPhone, a computer, a mouse, a glass of water, a watch, a desk, and then glancing at trees and cars, a road. Let it all be used. No particular order. No particular list. Let us use it in inclusively with the sun and the moon and the stars, with hills and mountains, 
trees and flowers, animals, let us let the list be all-inclusive. Anything that comes to mind, God is in this fingertip. God is in this candle. God is in this plant. God is in mother, father, sister, brother. God is in parent and child, government, community, family. We sink deep inside. God is in everything I see.